Hello everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and I'm so excited to show you today how to make one of these very easy um, fabric colored, soft covered, file folder journals that has a special closure. Now this is uh, something that I just made recently for a bundle so I thought well let me just show you how I'm making one. Um, Again, the idea has probably been out there before. I'm sure I'm sure it has, uh, but uh, it's a very easy concept. If you're not familiar with it, stay tuned. I'll walk you right through it. It'll be a craft with me. So here we go. Here's the prototype and she's covered with a, a beautiful upholstery fabric. You can use other fabrics. It doesn't have to be upholstery fabric, but I just happen to have some. So off you went. You can also use uh, tablecloths or uh, linens. Um, curtains, shower curtains, um, the cloth shower curtains would work best, and um, lots of ideas for you out there. Clothes, did I say that? Okay, so it has a flap here, and it has a pocket here, okay, and it has a journal inside, and this journal is a one signature journal. Um, you could put more signatures in here, I just put one, but it has 15 pages front and back, it will give you 60 workable pages. So there you go, uh, and uh, a lot of fun, very utilitarian, nice and soft, comfy in the hand, and also has room to grow if you decide to tuck other goodies in here. So there you go, um, let's get to it. So basically, if you ever come across these hanging files, these are super handy when you're junk journaling, and the reason is because they're so darn wide and they already have a spine in place, it's already folded, the paper is trained to handle that, and uh, often these old ones are very cool. You'll find these in thrift shops. My, I think they're not very expensive. I mean, in my thrift shop, I paid a dollar for 10 of them, and um, I think that they're so utilitarian when you are uh, uh, making uh, journals. They're just like a, a wonderful. And you can use regular manila folders as well, um, and you can get those at the Dollar Tree for a dollar for probably a 10-pack or something like that. But what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to cut off the metal the metal hanging thing. Okay, so I'm just going to go, you can use regular scissors, you can use a crafting, okay, I'll just stay here. I'm not going over there, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> I'll stay here with you guys, okay. So it's a craft with me, and it's going to be, uh, you know, me making this. <laughs> so here we go. Um, this measurement is not really that important. So just, just get the darn thing off. Okay, they're gone. All right, retract craft knife. You can do something else with these lighters later. I have no idea what, so mine are right now going in the garbage because I, I need more room in my craft room. Okay, so now my average journal with, here's the spine of my like, thinking journal, is usually nine by six. And it turns out that these have a pre-creased fold at these are six inches wide, six inches wide to the pre-creased fold, okay? So I'm going to just use what I have here, but I don't want it this tall, so I'm going to cut um, nine inches, up at uh, nine inches, yes, that's what I'm gonna do. Here I go, where am, am I in? <laughs> Tell me if I'm not, please, okay. All right, here we go, got my glasses on, life is good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine is how she counts it. Now she's using the craft mat to line up that black line with this black line and a ruler, and that's where I know where to cut. And uh, craft knife really makes it a lot, very handy. It's a little scary, I know, it's a knife, and you think, oh my God, I can cut my fingers off. But, um, and that could happen, that could happen. But if you make friends with it, I'm afraid to say that now. Uh, if you make friends, always retract. It can be your best friend because it can really give you nice, nice sharp edges very quickly, very easily, and you're off and running. Okay, so now, 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 need a little elbow room. Oops, Sunny's beside me asleep. Good. Check. Puppy check. All is well. All right, so here's some material. And I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Oh, I wanted to show you something important too. This is just my own experience. I'm just sharing what I'm learning as I go. Uh, and like I said, I'm not sponsored by these glues or anything like that. I just, I'm going to tell you honestly what I like to work with uh, that I have found uh, helpful over the years. Um, and, you know, just, you, you know, take it or leave it and uh, do what you want because uh, you got to have fun with your stuff. Okay, so I want to adhere my journal cover to the material in the easiest way. Okay, first I'll show you the way that didn't work. I was trying to use up, in the spirit of using up what I have, I have a bunch of Yoohoo glue and other stuff, and uh, so I was doing some Yoohoo glue down here like this, and basically, long story short is, uh, 
I wasn't really getting a good grab on the fabric with the Yoo-Hoo. It was, it was more like, where are you, who? Where, where are you? I didn't get a good grab. So I defaulted back to my, you know what? You know what it is. Yeah, where is it? I can't find it now. Um, hang on. There it is, right where I left it, my Scotch Create glue. Um, it's just a little stickier and grabs fabric a little better. So just kind of know that if you're struggling with a glue stick, some glue sticks, um, I don't know, they have more glueage, you know, like they just stick more and other ones are more designed to be temporary placement stuff. Dep definitely don't use a temporary glue stick unless you really want to remove the thing because it will just fail. Big, big fat fail -a yep. Um, so sometimes, uh, or the cheap ones, like the ones you get at the Dollar Tree. I've, maybe some people have luck with those things, but not me, boy, nope. Jot kind of jotted away on me and uh, left me hanging in the wind. Okay, so what I want to do is put it close to a straight, can't see, okay, it's close to a straight edge, as much as a straight edge as I have, so I don't have minimal cutting. Oh, see, my glue is already sticking. But I want to leave a little bit on this end and a little bit on this end. Okay, so I'm going to moosh, moosh it down. Horrible here. Okay, just want to check the back to make sure it's all flush Flusheroo is good. Okay, so now that is good. Now this side, I want to leave maybe half an inch as well. And warning, I am going to sew. Uh, you probably can glue this whole thing, but I think it, um, because I'm using a thicker fabric especially, I'm going to sew. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chubby fat side off and I'm literally just going to go ahead with my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut along the edge following that. You could also use one of these babies and a ruler but mine is kind of dull right now and I, i'm too lazy to change it so i'm back to fabric scissors because it's right here and i can do this okay so here we go Oop, try not to cut your pam try not to cut your uh folder which i always do but it's okay if you get a little nick or it's not exactly perfect because we're going to sew the edges and that will neaten up everything on the edges it will like even a rookie sewer like me am i recording yeah, yeah, okay. Um, can make it look halfway nice because of the, the ease of zigzag stitch and stuff like that. So you don't have to be a rocket scientist in the sewing department. Let me just nip a -roo this side up too. Can you see me? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm there in a minute. All right. And uh, so this could, this thing, this thing I'm making right now could be the base for about a billion things in craft in uh you know journal making crafting paper crafting that kind of thing so kind of remember this little thing if you haven't seen it like i said i know it's out there and it's been done and that kind of thing but sometimes we just need a little reminder <laughs> okay so now i'm going to take my fabric fix which i i this is how i store it that's what i do and it works and i do always get a little glue at the bottom of the thing but um, not that much that I'm that worried about it, but it is expensive glue. So if you're really concerned about <clears throat> glue leakage, don't do that. But, uh, um, it does work. <laughs> uh, I should stick, um, like the top of a sour cream container or a cottage cheese container, like glue it to the base. So, cause mine keeps toppling over and, uh, that would, that would probably stop that or glue it to like a little block of wood. That would be smart. Yep. 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 Okay, here we go. That's good. Now, and you could be done. That could be like, okay, I'm done. I'm done sewing. Um, or I'm done gluing. I don't need to sew. And absolutely right. So you do not need to sew um, this. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can remember to tell you the trick. I'll just tell you now. We're going to sew around the outside of this. But let's say because this is a raw edge. Eh? You know what I mean? And that might fray up a little bit. And you'll be playing that game for a while. Um, let me just stick this down before the glue dries. I get yucky. Um, the trick, ooh, what are you in there? Get out of there. Yeah, is you can take something like maybe a trim and you can glue the trim around and that could be your edging. See that? That could be your edging. Washi tape, probably not strong enough on its own, but I would probably lean towards something like that if you want to just glue the bejeebers out of the whole thing. You could absolutely do that. Okay, so now, now we're going to do these little, let's just check, make sure everything's all right. Everything's all right. Okay, everything's nice and flattened down, looking good. 
See how nicely, because I folded it over, it gives a very nice edge. Very nice edge. Okay. And uh, what is uh, beneficial to do, because these tend to flare out a little bit, is just to cut them on a little angle, almost like an envelope. And that way you don't get the dangle over. Okay. And this one. Uh-huh. Okay. And then this one. For no dangle over. Oh, he wants to dangle over for gosh sakes. <laughs> That's like back fat, you know? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with back fat. Back fat is beautiful. I love back fat. I have plenty of it. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, it is. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It is hot in here. Why is it so hot in here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm nervous all of a sudden. Okay. Um, so we have that. One, I'm going to make the wrap around, and the other one, I'm going to make a pocket. So I can go ahead and actually glue my pocket in place. Nothing wrong with that. And I'm just going to do a light glue. And you don't even really have to glue it because I'm actually going to sew it. Yeah, it'll give me a little extra strength. But gluing is totally fine. Yep, I'm using Fabric Fix there because it's a really strong glue. Fabric to fabric. Fabric to paper, paper to paper, and it's a clear silicone glue. And uh, there we go. You can find it in my uh, Amazon store if you're curious, or pretty much most everywhere else, like the Ho Hobby Lobby and Michaels and all that stuff. Walmart, I think they even carry it. Okay. Oh, no, didn't want to do that yet. Sorry, take that off. That never happened. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. Let me, let me check for puppy. Puppy clearance, all good. He's asleep in the corner. Moving my chair, turning the machine on. Hold on. Okay. Yep, you're there. Okay, so I'm going in and I'm going to zigzag stitch down here. Yes, I am. This is a Pro Brother Project One Runway Limited Edition something or other. C, oh, I turned it off. CE1125 P is in Peter RW. I got it at Walmart. I somewhere between one and 200, I think. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, like not that long ago. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, wrong stitch. Look at that. Yep, that happens. I'm on zero. I need to be on four. Okay, let's just back it up. I'm using a thread that's similar color to the thing, but you could use a, a contrasting one to give it some flair. You might want to make this stitches a little wider, or you might not. That's okay. And then you just kind of go along. Now, it is going through paper and through two layers of material, so you want to be gentle with your machine and, you know, whisper sweet nothings to it that it's okay. It's going to make it. You just keep Keep chewing on that material. There you go. All right, next thing you know, she's eating the entire cake. All right, here we go. Same thing on this side. The, and this is, this is very relaxing. I don't know why, but I got into making these last night and I was just zipping along and I think I made six last night and it was so much fun. And, and uh, I don't know, I just, I, I, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. So I, it's fun to do different kinds of journals. Once you make one, you're like, oh, finally I made one. Oh my God, it's my first journal. I'm so excited. But then your little brain starts going and you start thinking, what else could I make? What else could I make? Okay, so now I'm going to go. Can you see that? Well, I'm going to go around the world with a zigzag stitch. So basically this is already done and this is already done. So I just have to sew down the two sides. So that's what I'm doing now. This is Pam sewing. Here we go. Hold your breath, everybody. Zigzag again. Okay, going a little faster. Feeling frisky, feeling mighty, following a straight line. I can follow a straight line. That's probably the biggest thing with sewing for me is following a straight line. So I like to consider the inherent non-straightness of my line as my signature sewing move. So if you really want to know if it, it's an authentic Pam, just look for the bad sewing. Yeah, that's pretty much my, my story. Okay, here we go. Ready? And we're off. All right, and we're going. So basically this sew went all the way around the world, coming down the home stretch, coming home to mama. Yep, here we go. And we're coming. So you could make envelopes and folios and, you know, ephemera holders. I mean, really, you know, we could do so many things with this thing. So we may play with more ideas with this because I haven't done these in a while. Okay, come on, come on back over. Hold on. 
Okay, we're back. All right, so we are sewed, and that is good, and life is well. Okay, which side had the glue on it? See, it's already dried, but I don't want the residual glue to show, so I'm just gonna, no, yes, 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 I'm gonna do this now. I was gonna sew that, no, yeah, I was actually gonna sew that all together. Um, let me do that, let me do that, hang on. Okay, I actually meant to do this. Because that's what happens when Pam gets talking. Yeah, I meant to sew these together and then just continue down the side. And I did not do that, but now I am completing the mission. You might want to go back a little bit. Okay, then go kind of guide it through. Backing up. Okay, done. All right, and we're off. We're off and running to the other side. Life is good. Pulling that up. Okay, so this will slide under. Putting that baby down. And we go. Yeah, yeah, we're going. We'll back it up a little bit. Okay, and then we're back. It's okay to back up when you're uh, on fabric because the fabric will, you know, it's not like just perforating paper. Um, okay, so now we're going back over there. Hang on. And we're back. We're back. Hello, everyone. Okay, so, so, <laughs> she says, um, I forgot to do it on the one I showed you, but I put a piece of just this crocheted lacy stuff here because I wanted to mask the raw edge of this because this side will show. And all I did was pull out the old magic fabric fix yet again. Can you see? Can you see? And uh, coming down, coming down the mountain. Here we go. Yeah, that's how it's done. Yeah, I can glue like nobody's business. And you can pretty much glue this whole thing, like I said. So know that you have options. And uh, we love options as crafters because you never know what supplies you're going to have on hand, right? I mean, you know, even somebody with a lot of supplies occasionally runs out of a supply and they're like, oh, I don't have that. What am I going to do? That's where crafter ingenuity comes in. That's right. That's when you go deep, you think hard and you think, well, what, what could I do in place of that? And then you come up with something and you're like, oh my God, this is even better than the original. Yep. That's what happens. Okay. So now we have the basic construction. We have the closure, we have this, and we have that. And we're, we're thinking we're pretty darn amazing, but we, we need some paper in here. So let me grab papers. Oh, oh, oh. Let me grab papers that are already sized. Okay, that's pretty good. How about you? Okay, you're pretty good. All right, so we have these. There's 15 sheets. I just used all different kinds of uh, papers. Um, and I'm gonna leave that on there. Just make sure that I'm pretty much where I wanna be. Folded, give me a nice little Sharpie crease. There you are. My favorite tool, bone folder. I really, there are very like few tools that I have to have, but it would be bone folder and it would be crocodile, big bite number two, crocodile two, big bite, and my one inch circle punch. I think I would have to have that. You know, not to mention like the scissors and stuff. Yeah, we all know that. Maybe a large paper clip. Yeah, I think I'd have to put that in there. Maybe the tiny scissors, the little fussy cutting scissors, because you can get right in there to the little tiny nip, nip, nip. Yeah, maybe those. Okay. Um, I actually have two pair. I guess I could never find them. So I had to, I had to get a second pair. Um, okay. There you are. All right. So let's put these in. And because this is a signal, single signature, I'm going to find my middle. There's my middle. It's already pre-folded for me. Isn't that nice? It's so nice. It's like arthritic hands. You are going to be A-OK -okay with this one. All right, here we go. Put this here where I want it. You know where I got to take you back to. Sewing machine. Let's go. Let's do this. OK, we are back. OK, I know I'm not there, but I'm coming. OK, so what I want you to see is I, I would keep a, keep a clip on here. Well, I would keep a clip on here just to keep these together. And then you want to decide how far you want it from the bottom and how far you want it from the top. And you could actually clip it, but I, it, just holding it seems to be fine. Um, and I use this and wrap it around so I don't have to deal with that. And it fits in the machine nicely. So I put it down. And then I grab my little tails and I just sew a few stitches. Oh, no, this is where you want to remember to go back down to setting number one, which is a straight stitch. And then you want to elongate your stitch to make it a longer stitch. So I'm going all the way up to a five. So I don't put too many perforations through my papers. Okay, I'm not exactly on the middle, but that's okay. I'll reorient. And now I'm on the middle. Okay, and just let the machine pull it through, guide it, just keeping it in the center as best you can. Slow down near the end, and then do a couple back stitches because we are going through fabric. So it's okay. It's okay if you, if you didn't too, but it'll just stay together better if you do. 
And there we go. Okay, let's uh, let's go back over there. Come on, I'll show you what we got. So exciting.